In this demo, I'm going to show you how to put together an action sequence. So here's an example. Uh, it used to be difficult to do the Photoshop part. That's actually gotten quite easy. The important part now is to get the right kind of photos. So you want your camera to be steady, not moving at all. You want your subject to move across the visual plane like this one here. And ideally, you want to take the photos on in the shade so you don't have to deal with shadows underneath. Those are the key points. So what you should have from your camera, you will have a set of images. Uh, I have here eight of them. And you can tell that by sequential number, they are all in the right order. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this over just, just a tad. I have Photoshop open here. I'm going to take my first image. I'm going to drag it into Photoshop. Just drag it in. And oops, try that again. Bring that up here. There it is. Here's my first image. And you can see on your layers palette, there's the first one. It's called background. So I'm going to go back to my folder. I'm going to go select the other eight images. And now I'm going to drag all of those on top of the original one I opened up. The reason I do that is that way it lines them up perfectly. You see the X? When you see that X, you just hit enter on your keyboard each time. And it will bring in, as you can see on the right hand side in your layers palette, it will bring in all the layers. So now I'm at six, seven, and eight layers. Now what I want to make sure is that once I have all the layers in, that the numbers in here are actually sequential. So if I look at the numbers, I am going here 24, 25, 26, 27, and then 21, 22, 23. So those three should actually be before this. So I need to bring those down here so that the sequence is actually correct. So now when I'm looking at that, I have my last image and I'm going backwards as I turn the eyeballs off. So there I have my sequence of images. Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, I am going to uh, zoom in a little bit, just click on here so you can see a little bit better what's happening. Now what I want to use, I want to use my object selection tool. So that's my fourth one down. Hold that down, make sure your object selection tool. And then all you have to do is make sure that you're on the correct layer. So if I go to here uh, and where to make a selection, that object is or that person is over here somewhere. So we'll select that. That's not what I want. I want to make sure I'm on this background layer here. The background though, I'm going to keep where it is. So I'm not actually going to touch it. I'm going to go up one layer and go to that layer and make sure that's the active layer with the gray box. Then I'm going to drag a box around the player here and make that selection. Now it's going to do that guessing for me and select everything, even included the ball. I'm just going to drag around the ball again so to make sure I get all the shading of the ball. Uh, so I have all of that and now I'm going to click on my mask button to add a mask. So there he is. Now I'm going to go next layer, turn on the eyeball, make sure that's the correct layer, make a selection around my player. Again, drag it in. I've got the ball and I'm going to put a mask on it. And so I'm going to keep doing that with each of the layers. And as you can see, it's a relatively quick process. And you can see that some of the images is a bit of a shadow down here. So if I really wanted to get technical, I could add that in, but we'll see what uh, the final result looks like, whether or not that's needed. So I'm going to add that one in. So, and we can see how that looks without those shadows and we can see if that's good enough or not then i can show you how to add some shadows in there see now you notice what i did is i forgot to switch to that layer so when i made that selection it selected my player from the wrong layer so i, I don't want that so i'm going to go over here go select deselect and try that again make that selection and this time I'm guessing, yeah, it's just selected him, didn't do a great job on the ball, so I'm just going to add that ball in again. It also didn't include his hair, so I'm going to go and add a little bit more here. And this time it added his hair in, so that's good. All right, and we've got two more to go. So do that one. And again, no hair, so we'll add that in. And no hand, we'll add that in. And it missed the back of his head still, so let's add that in. So that's pretty good. A little bit more of the ball. And you can it doesn't have to be exact because there's no overlap, right? So I can just make that selection. It still looks good. And just to if I turn the background layer off, you can see how each one of these is a is a layer that, that works by itself, right? And now I do the very last layer. Make that selection. And I may want to make sure I get the ball. And I want to make sure I get the top of his head. Here we go. 
and I am going to put a mask on that. So now I have the action sequence um, and it's ready to go. So that would be as far as you would need to take the project. Uh, but if you wanted to, you can then also animate that. Um, that's sort of a little extra step. And if you see down here, I have the animation, the timeline window that's found under window timeline. So if you turn that on, then you get a window down here and it says create frame animation or create video timeline. So frame animation is what I want. And I click on here and I get the frame animation. So then I can turn off all the layers and I have my first frame and I can add a second frame and add him in there. And then I can add a third frame and I can turn him off, turn the next one on. And another frame, turn that off, turn that on. Another frame, turn that off, on and so on. Go through my document to create my timeline. And there's my action sequence. And now if I play that, I get choom get him running out of here. If I wanted to um, not have him here, I would need one more layer in the background that has no player in it. That's a little bit more complicated, but if you have an extra shot, you could use that there, but that's how you would animate that. And if you want to save that as a GIF that you can share on the web uh, or post on the Instagram, you would go file and then save, uh, go to export, save for web legacy and then you can choose your settings for your gif what you want to watch out here is that the size is not too large so my width here right now is 5500 pixels that's way too big so um, it's going to take a long time to actually do that um, so we're going to once it finishes crunching here we're going to change that to just 1080 which is uh, hd quality and then you'll see how much quicker that's uh, going to crunch that together so it's quite big so we're going to change that to 1080 by 720 which is perfect that's a hd quality um, and so we're going to tab out of that and now it's thinking through that and it's going to make that much quicker and uh, it will have all of our frames ready and then all we'd have to do is go save and save that file and see now if i play that you will see the the whole animation but i'm going to click save and i'm going to save that to my desktop and i'm going to call that number two save and it will create that for me and if i then i can go to my desktop i'm just going to go over here desktop and look for number two and open with if you just click on it you might not see it so i'm going to open with photos and then i will get my sequence here that i've created and that's all there is to it